great that you've decided to watch this video. Welcome to the first of three Festival at Home Bible studies that I'm going to be leading through this weekend. Uh, my name is Sam. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be able to share this with you. Uh, it's a shame we can't meet in person, but I'm really excited to see what it is that God wants to do throughout this weekend in our homes. Um, I'm an ex-Cliff College student. Uh, I now work for a church in South London. And for the past uh, four or five years or so, I've been involved with Cliff Festival, in particular with the youth ministry. Uh, well, this weekend, the theme is global vision. And so we're going to do three Bible studies based around that theme. Uh, the topics that we're going to cover, the titles of our Bible studies are One Family, One Body with Many Roles, and One Mission. Uh, like I said, I'm really excited to see what it is the Lord wants to do this weekend uh, and so I do pray and I hope that you come to these studies these videos or all the content this weekend with an open heart and an open mind and uh, ready to hear what it is that God is saying to you uh, at this time well let's make a start on our first study uh, one family I wonder what your experience of family has been like uh, I want you to take a moment now to reflect on your family uh, I, I wonder whether as you're doing that, you feel emotions that are positive or emotions that are negative. Uh, for some people, uh, your experience of family has been a really positive one, and that's fantastic. Uh, for others, your experience of family has not been positive. Uh, to think about your family, perhaps, uh, is a really hard thing to do. Uh, for others, uh, it's both a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, maybe your family, they, they were nice, they were good. But maybe you had a really difficult relationship within that family. Perhaps you struggled to get on with your mum or your dad, or maybe you had a sibling that you struggled to get along with. Well, the Bible says that uh, when we decide to follow Jesus, we get a brand new life. Uh, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, uh, that anyone that is in Christ, that simply means anyone that's decided to follow Jesus, is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Uh, and that is true. That new life is true for our family as well. And uh, when we make a decision to follow Jesus, we enter into a new family, a family of believers, uh, a family of like minded people who have also decided to follow Jesus. It's uh, following Jesus. It leads to life in abundance, uh, whereas following our own ways can only lead to death. Uh, this family that we join, it stretches out across the entire world. Uh, there isn't a continent on this planet that doesn't currently have a member of the Jesus family on it. Uh, and here's the thing about this family. It's the best family that anyone could hope for. Well, the Bible talks uh, an awful lot about families and family and uh, in fact, a lot of the Bible is based around different families who all make up one big family. Uh, they share one thing in common, uh, whether that's Abraham's family, Jacob's family, or all the Israelites who are made up of lots of different families, or even Jesus's earthly family. They all share a common goal, a common desire, which is to follow God wholeheartedly. And I want us to spend a moment now to think about uh, a Bible verse that's actually quite difficult for us to hear, uh, but I do think it can help us understand uh, how precious and how beautiful this new family that we enter into is when we make a decision to follow Jesus. Well, if you get your Bibles open uh, in front of you, and if you turn with me to Matthew chapter 10, verses uh, 25, starting at, oh sorry, 35, starting at verse 35. Uh, we're going to read these verses and um, what we see here is Jesus teaching about family. It's quite hard to listen to, uh, but we're going to learn from this passage. So this is Jesus speaking and he says, For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the member of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Wow. 
Uh, I don't know about you, but I find those words from Jesus uh, really hard to hear. Uh, so what's that all about? Why did I choose those verses to, to concentrate on, to look at, when I've just been saying how good this new family is, and yet Jesus here says that to follow him may mean for your family to turn against one another, your earthly family. Well, let's try and understand what Jesus is saying here. Well, the first thing to note is that Jesus here is not encouraging disobedience towards parents or within families, uh, but rather he's talking about uh, the potential cost involved when we decide to follow Jesus. Following Jesus may upset some people. Uh, following Jesus may mean going against what it is your family believe. Uh, it may cost you your own family. And we're going to hear a story in just a moment where that actually happened. Uh, but here's the thing. Following Jesus is worth it. And I want to tell you this story now. Uh, and it comes from Open Doors Youth. Uh, Open Doors are going to be doing a seminar for us this weekend, or they'll be sharing some content that you can engage with. Uh, Open Doors are an organisation that support uh, Christians around the world who are being persecuted and punished for their faith in Jesus. Uh, and so I want to share this story with you of, of a, an individual, a believer, uh, someone that's put their trust in Jesus, but as a result of it, their own family has turned away. But what you'll discover in this story is how precious the family of believers that you enter into when you become a follower of Jesus really is. I am a Somali believer was just 19 when she decided to follow Jesus after he spoke to her in a dream. She dreamt that she walked into a Christian's home and heard a magnificent voice. I have never heard anything like it before, she says. Later, I was very unwell for two days. I asked my friends to take me to church and there I wrote a prayer request on a piece of paper and asked the pastor to pray for me. All signs of illness disappeared. I knew Jesus was the truth and I committed my life to him. But once her family discovered that she had become a Christian, Aya was in grave danger. My family forced me to leave. My brother told me that my faith is haram, which means deserving of death. They searched for me many times to kill me. Aya spent a night hiding in a tree, terrified and with nowhere to go. She went to see her mother the next day to beg her to let her stay for e even one night in their family home. Her mother threw hot tea in her face, shouting, You are not part of me anymore. I am left and prayed. She prayed, If the men in my family find me now, they will kill me. You know how angry they are at me. You know the community expects them to punish me. Show me the way. She ended up back at the church. And the pastor's family took her in. Ian was heartbroken to be rejected by her earthly family, but your support has helped her to find a new family in God. Through a Bible study facilitated by Open Doors, Ian says, we meet twice a week to study the Bible in Somali. This helped me a lot. Before, I did not know such fellowship. But now it is really exciting to learn in my own language and have fellowship and meet other Somali believers. We have faced difficulties, but Open Doors stands by us. Like when some of our brothers were imprisoned over false allegations. I love the Bible studies. Wow. Uh, what a story. Uh, I am got a new family who encouraged her and loved her. Uh, in that story, we see Jesus' teaching kind of come true. Uh, I have made a decision to follow Jesus and it cost her, her her earthly family and yet it was worth it and she entered into a new family of believers, this family that stretches all around the world. Uh, when you become a Christian you join the best family anyone could ever ask for uh, and this family is available to everyone. Uh, you simply need to welcome Jesus into your heart and in doing so, you become part of this amazing family. Well, let me finish with some thoughts from uh, Hebrews. Hebrews 10, 22 to 24. 
Uh, the author writes to Christians, he writes to this big family that we've been talking about, and he says, uh, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who, had, who promised is faithful, and let us consider how we may spur one another onward, uh, on towards love and good deeds. The family you enter into when you choose to follow Jesus is one with a confident hope for eternal life because of Jesus. And this family is one that will spur you on towards love and good deeds. Uh, this family has stretched throughout history. You can read about it in the Bible. Uh, it stretches throughout hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, and it is stretching all around the world as well. It's a family you get to be a part of when you choose to follow Jesus. Well, you maybe have never decided to follow Jesus, and that's okay. And I just want to give you an opportunity now to respond in that way. Uh, so I'm going to say a prayer. And uh, if you would like to make this prayer your own, then simply say Amen at the end. Uh, amen just means let it be. Uh, let it be so in my life. Uh, and this prayer is a prayer of coming to Jesus uh, and saying sorry to him for the things that we've done wrong but then also asking him to, to uh, enter into your heart and your mind so that you can become part of this family, this global family. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that when we give our life to Jesus, uh, we enter into this brand new family and that it's the best family in the world, that it's worth the cost of upsetting our family, our earthly family and our friends. Lord, I thank you that uh, we enter into a new life and into a new family as well. So Lord, uh, I pray now for anyone that's watching, uh, if they want to make a decision to follow Jesus themselves, uh, we pray that we ask that and we say that we are sorry for what we've done wrong. And we say, Jesus, enter into my heart and mind right now. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer for the first time or for the millionth time, uh, if you've just made a decision to recommit your life or commit your life to Jesus, and then I'd love to hear from you. Please get in touch with uh, uh, Cliff Festival. Uh, just drop them a message so that we can help you uh, kind of start this new journey with Jesus. We'll help plug you into a church. Maybe you want to speak to your youth worker or your church leader about what you've just said as well. Well, that is the end of our first Bible study together. Um, we'll be doing another one on uh, one body, how we are this one family, but we're also one body within that family.